It's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tim Jeanette. Hey everyone, Tim Jeanette the Metal Meeple here, and in this video we're taking a quick look at a quick game called Oh My Gods! Exclamation point. It's designed by Tim Blank and illustrated by Tim Blank. He published it under Game Worthy Labs in 2016, and it's a game for three to five players. It takes about 15 minutes or so, and if you're familiar, and I, I hate to compare this to Clue, but if you're familiar, the card concept in Clue is you take a look at your cards, you ask the player to left something, they, they have to show you if they have it. Similar idea, each character has a trait or an element, and you're trying to narrow down who stole Zeus's lightning bolt. Beginning of the game, you place one on, on the table and put the Zeus lightning bolt on him. You're trying to find out who that is. By asking questions to other players, they show you their gods, and you're like, oh, well, I'm narrowing it down because I know that god's not under that lightning bolt. So let me show you more detail how the game's played, and we'll come back and I'll tell you what I think. So in Oh My Gods, the whole point of the game is you're trying to find out who stole Zeus's lightning bolt. There's 20 god cards in the deck. You shuffle them all up, depending on the number of players, you're going to pass out so many to each player, and then you're going to put so many in the Olympus, which is the middle of the board face down. You can see there's a bunch of gods here. We're going to go over those in a minute. Each player is also going to receive one of these portfolio things here, which you can dry erase on. Also, it comes with a pad of sheets of paper that you can use pencils on or pens if you want instead. But it details out the three phases or three th actions that you can do during your turn. Now, what you're going to do after everybody gets their cards, somebody's going to receive Zeus. They're going to place Zeus face up in front of them and draw one of the cards from Olympus to fill up their hand. And then you're ready to begin with the player who started with Zeus. What you're trying to do is find out information so you can narrow down gods that you know didn't do it. So in this case, we know that these four gods didn't do it. So on our sheets, we could mark X's on those four gods. Now, the first thing you do on your turn is search for clues. So to search for clues, you choose an element or a trait, and you ask the player, it's always going to be to your left, but you ask them to show you one of those. So, hey, uh, player to my left, show me a god of fire. And they're going to look through their hand. If they have one or more gods that have the fire element or whatever trait you ask for, they have to show you one face down after you view it you give it back if that player if the player to your left does not have a card that matches that trait or element then it's going to go on to the next player and so on and so forth until either no one's able to show you one which gives you tons of information or somebody shows you one in which case that action's done and you're going to move on probably to action three or step three of your turn but step two you can guess the thief so later in the game you're going to do this. You can only do that one time. You basically say, oh my gods, it was maybe Aphrodite. And you pick up this card and you look at it. And if it's not that character, you put it back and you're eliminated from the game. All the cards in your hands, you put face up so everybody else can sh see what those were. And then they continue until somebody does the same thing as you, except they're cooler and they succeed. The last thing you can do on your turn, however, is also optional, but it is to play a god power. Each one of these gods has a power at the bottom that, uh, when in focus, you can read. Anyway, once the, uh, you can play this power, such as this one, as Zeus is given to you, give it to another player instead, then take a god from Olympus. Anytime you play a power, you're going to place this card face up on the table in front of you. Now everybody else knows what card you played and everything like that and what card did not steal Zeus's lightning bolt. So it has a little bit of information for everybody else. Anytime you play a power, you want to try to make sure that you net more information than what you give. Now the Zeus card is pretty much a targeting card. A lot of cards will state, you know, if the player, the player with Zeus is going to reveal a card or whatever. Uh, so you don't want Zeus because it's always negative. Uh, a different action you can take is to use his god power Instead of using your god power, you can place him in front of somebody else, basically. And just to show you some more of these god powers, you can say, take another turn after this one. When Zeus is moved to another, or mm -hmm. moves Zeus to another player, that player cannot use a god power on their next turn. Uh, it is m worth mentioning that there's some with a lightning bolt. If they do not have a lightning bolt, they have to be used during your action step of your turn. Otherwise, if they have a lightning bolt, you can use it whenever outside a turn on another player's turn, etc. 
Anyway, you keep going until somebody guesses correctly and they have found the thief of the lightning bolts. So let's take a look at what I think or talk about what I think. And there you go. That's pretty much an overview of the game. What do I think about it? Well, I really like it, but there is a couple minor things I have about it. But this game is a fun alternative to games like Clue, where you're trying to get a, gather information and narrow down what card is missing from the hand of cards everybody has. Uh, so if you have a bunch of family members who do like to play Clue, this is probably something you want to try out. It's very short. It's accurate on the time. Even if you're playing five players, I mean, maybe 20 minutes. It's super quick, especially if you've played it before and you're very familiar with all the cards. Because once you know all their abilities, it makes it a lot quicker and, what, and you know what to expect. Now, with that being said, some of the abilities are probably way too powerful, but it is interesting because they scale throughout the game. Let me, let me go over a couple with you. So, uh, one of these abilities is the player with Zeus must show you a random card from their hand, take a god from Olympus. This is a pretty typical ability, right? Anytime you're playing a card, you're going to give up one piece of information to everybody else because you got to put that face up. So you always want to probably get at least two more so that you're one up on other people or three more or whatever. So you get a little bit better here. You got force up to three opponents to each show you a random god from their hand. That's pretty interesting, right? But then there are a couple of cards that make it a little bit they're probably a little bit too powerful, I think. One, the player, uh, which is Athena, the player with Zeus must show you four random cards from their hand. The most cards you can ever have is five, and that depends on the, the number of players. That pretty much gives you all the information. That's, that's a huge amount of information, but the bigger kicker is you can play this against the player who's to your right, who is the player you're not going to get the information from very fast. So I think this is probably a little too powerful, especially if you draw it at the very beginning of the game and it's not an Olympus. On top of that, the last one here, look at all the gods in Olympus, then shuffle Olympus. That is also super powerful because there's usually about four of them out there. And that's that's a huge amount of information. Uh, there has been a couple of games, we've played this quite a bit, but there's been a couple of games where literally in one round, somebody was able to guess who it is with 100% accuracy based on the, the situation. Because, you know, all the characters with that element or trait, I think, were out in the middle. And then the the last one was was the one under the lightning bolt. Bad shuffling or whatever, what do you call it? However, don't let that dissuade you or whatever the word is from this game. I do think you should try it out. Like I said, there is a there is a, a power struggle with those cards because they're great in the very beginning, but they get weaker as cards get divvied out and things like that, or players don't have them in their hand because they've been playing cards. So mid-game they're not as powerful. Early game they are. However, there are a couple that can cancel as uh, quick actions or whatever, cancel those cards happening. So if other players have them, they pretty much have to play those to counteract it. However, if they don't have it and it's in the middle in Olympus, it's kind of saddening to see that player get so much information so quickly. But other than that, the game is really, really well designed. I think it's really fun. It's a very good take on that classic mechanism that I don't really see has been used that many times since. So. Very good, uh, very good implementation of that. So kudos, and I'm looking forward to more uh, designs by Tim Blank. So if you have any questions, feel free to email me at timjanets at gmail.com. Follow me on Twitter or other locations down below at the handle. Uh, I have a podcast called MeepleCore. It's at meeplecore.com or on iTunes, etc. And until next time, keep on rocking and rolling dice. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.